you can't run forever. This is for our Patreon listeners. We get it. Maybe for our, if you are part of our Cinematics Patreon community, you get early access to our spoilers, maybe at least a week or two, sometimes even three. I'm about like maybe, I'm so behind on posting spoilers for our Cinematics YouTube channel. You'll get some really early access if you are a member of our Patreon community. For the week of May 17th, Eric and I will be talking about the end of You Can't Run Forever. Eric, what made this movie special for you? Spoiler, go all the way. Say whatever you want to say. Well, so like in the trailer, there's a part where uh, J.K. Simmons uh, or Wade comes up behind Miranda, sits down next to her, says, hey, she turned around, freaks out and runs off. Like that. that's in the trailer. And um, <laughs> in the movie, that's like just a really cool part because it's kind of uh, sort of at that point where because you've seen JK or you've seen Wade like kill people up until that point, And then he's chasing down Miranda. That's a scary moment. If you haven't seen the trailer, it, it is. But then he sits down next to her and she runs off and he's like, ah, cool. I'll get up and just kind of mosey out. Like he's not, if he wanted to kill her, he would have done it right then. There's like something else going on. Right. And do you, and, and did that make sense for you that he was playing this elongated cat and mouse with her just for the fun of it? Like a cat playing yeah, with yarn? And, Is that well, the theory? And, and then even at the end, when he uh, he does the thing with the gun with uh, Jenny, it's like, here, mm-hmm. take my gun, shoot me. She's like, I, where's Miranda? And it's like, I murdered, or I can't remember exactly what the line was like. I killed her. Pull the goddamn trigger. And she's like, yes. hold the gun. And he like pulls the trigger. Nothing happens. He, like takes it. Like he he's, he's telling her you got to rack the gun. You got to rack the gun. Yeah. He's basically just fucking with them the whole time. Right. Like he could have, he could have right. got, even when he first kills, was it Miranda's dad? Uh, Miranda's like, stepdad. Yeah. yeah Je- I mean, um, yeah. Miranda's stepdad, Jenny's husband. Like he could have just like came up, boom, popped him right there. But he wanted to knock on the door and hold the gun up first. Uh, like his, his whole character is. Like he's definitely a serial killer, but he seems to like just relish and with people. It's like I'm going right. to kill you, but I want you to know it's me first. Right, exactly. He makes them go to the point of fear, yeah. where they they want to they almost welcome death. They're so scared right now. Th- you know? Then uh, yeah. uh, at the end, he calls Olivia. Hey, hey, your mom's uh, in labor, but uh, you know she she forgot something at the house because I, I forget what Olivia's uh, Emily. Our character's name's Emily. It's like, hey, uh, tell Miranda that, that her mom left something at the house and blah, blah, blah. Emily didn't know. You know, she just thinks it's, uh, oh, yeah, uh, she's pregnant. Of course, she's in the hospital. And, you know, okay, Miranda, let's go home and get the thing. And he's waiting there for him. Did he want to die at the end of the movie? What is your read on that? Because he has Emily, played by Olivia Simmons. He has Jenny, the mother, played by Fernanda Urejola. And he has Miranda, played by Isabella An- Anaya. They're all on the table. Is he waiting for his death? Meaning, is he self-sabotaging himself and waiting for them to actually survive themselves and teaching them? Or do you think he wanted to just kill them all and they they overtook him? That's a good question. I don't know. I, it would make sense that he would want that as an option because, hey, you can't run forever. You know, he's going to go to jail eventually. Right. Goes right maybe, to the title. Maybe you kill me. Cause I, so I forget what was, well, what was his Jenny, and Jenny's that like they were, they were exes, right? And then she. No, no. So Wade was the reason why he, he killed it. He killed all these people was because his wife, who's not seen in the movie, had an affair with some guy in a bike and they were at the basement of his house. So he goes home after an early day of work at his possible university or classroom because he teaches a, a course on survival instincts or something. Yeah. And Wade goes home and he sees the the bike in the uh, in the driveway. Right. And then he sees a basement of, you know, he sees wine bottles and glasses and everything, some tattered clothing around. And so he goes to the basement. And as soon as he goes to the basement, it cuts to the woman gardener. I mean, not the woman, the, the next neighbor. door neighbor, elderly neighbor. She's like, watering. you've been making a blah, blah, blah. And he's like, so she's watering I, the neighbor. If I remember correctly, do they yeah. cut away from that part? But it's it's implied right. that he kills so, her. First of all, he kills his wife and he kills her lover. And you just hear them from the gunshots and the experience from outside from that neighbor while she's holding the hose. And when he comes out to see her, he's dressed in sort of that biking gear. He comes to see her and she says, you guys, all you guys do is make so much noise. I'm going to call the cops on you guys for making so much noise. And so he's just, I mean, he's just so sick of things. So he kills in cold blood. 
And which is great because when he shoots people, you don't see it's not a grisly situation. He just shoots them and then she falls down. And then then it starts the whole movie where it, it cut, you know, it's the beginning of the movie and you understand yeah. why he went to that gas station needing gas and everything like that. So towards the end, his relationship with Jenny is Je he killed the soon to be husband. Well, was it the husband? Yeah, he killed because I think they were getting ready to be married. He killed Jenny's lover, who's also the father of Emily, played by Olivia Simmons, and the stepdad of Miranda, played by Isabel Anaya. So at the end, you have Jenny, Miranda, and Emily sitting with Wade at a table, and they're trying to figure out how they can escape the situation. There's a gun in the vicinity. And so my question to you is, do you think Wade... Because when Jenny, when they actually struggle, he punches them and they punch him. They do some really interesting stuff. And eventually Je Jenny has the gun to Wade and she racks the gun. And I, if I recall, when he looks at her, it's sort of like a knowing look, like he's going to get it. And is that, instead of him being fearful, he's like, yes, finally, you're going to kill me because you've learned the lesson on how to rack a gun. I don't know. That was my read. Yeah. But yeah, maybe... You know, I wonder if maybe it's like one because like this this doesn't feel like I uh, like a a clear movie anyway, like a black yeah. and white sort of movie. Like there's a lot of what do you call it, just a what subtlety uh, and whatnot yeah, to right, this. Yeah. So maybe it was like a situation where he's like, uh, "I'm just gonna go all out. I'm already I'm already in it. The, the, go out this this, this has, way. you know, my story ends up one of two ways: dead or in prison. And if I can go big enough, maybe someone will make that decision for me." Oh, I don't. I, I don't have to run until I get caught by the cops. Maybe I'll be careless, and then something will slip. And oh, look, Jenny shot me in the face. You know what? My life's over. Didn't want that had happen, but I'm cool that it does. And it goes back to his earlier comment at the gas station where he says nothing matters, right? Something like yeah. about nothing matters. And so. that and that that was another thing. That's kind of where you get a a good look at his character because he shoots the guy with the dog. The dog. And, and the, he the shoots two, two people. people watching. He shoots the person that runs the gas station. Not no, no, he doesn't shoot the run the person who runs the gas station. He shoots he doesn't? No, he no, shoots the two people sitting there. Right. And then he shoots the guy I think one more person. I thought yeah. he shot the guy running the gas station because he left the no. he left the lady pumping gas. No. She's like hiding behind her pump. car and he's like, Hey, all right, well, see ya. And then he just takes off. He kills one more oh, person. Oh wait, no, he kills her and the, the guy I, I can't remember. No, no, he doesn't stuff. kill the girl. He doesn't kill the girl in the gas station. He kills those two people outside the gas station. He yeah. kills the he doesn't kill the dog. He kills the dog owner who's a jerk. Yeah. And then the so I see he's not all bad. He left the dog alive. <laughs> the manager of the gas station. He opens the door at the end, and J.K. Simmons' character just looks at him and he goes off in the, the bike on the on the motorbike. Okay. Yeah. I okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So I, you, know, you know what? I guess I'll just have to watch it again. <laughs> no, no. What, what's that. also very interesting about this is the deputies played by Graham, Patrick Martin, and Andres Velez. I don't know. So they're the deputies. And they're you, you think it's sort of they're incompetent at the beginning, they're in over their head. And you think the way these movies go, that they'll be killed at the end of the movie, or they'll have some kind of showdown with Wade played by J.K. Simmons. But what do you call it, Eric? A red herring? They're showdown with wade never happens because yeah. the real showdown is the, with the women and wade at the end so i thought that was cool what did you think eric um yeah i didn't really track their characters too much like i you know i remember them in the movie but they they didn't seem as uh pivotal as like say jenny or miranda or wade um yeah. did even there was the family the uh that uh miranda runs into in right, the forest right. they're they're just camping and they all die. They all die. Dude, that oh, so who what was the what was the kid's name that the young what, boy that Miranda I, runs into? I'm assuming it might be Todd. I could be wrong, but yeah. Oh, they the end, gets late and they end up like curled up next to it. I think he got like uh shot or stabbed or stomach, something. Yeah, stop, and yeah. then she wakes up and he's just like dead. <laughs> like, yeah, just dead. And it's like oh, that's kind of it's sad. Yeah. We saw yeah. that coming. We saw that coming, but hey. It kind kinda did, but kinda didn't. Cause like, you know, you you figure you figure if he's gonna die, like it, it would be because Wade came there and like, you know, shot him in the face again. Or like, you know, you figure it'd be like some like in your face kind of death, but it was more like uh she just kind of wakes up and is kind of stretching out, getting ready for the day as much as you can when you're running from a killer and just waking up in the middle of the woods. And like she didn't even notice him dead right away. You know, she just kind of slowly, you know, it, it was just kind of a, yeah, it, it was a really good scene. That last third act is a great misdirect because if we recall, Miranda accidentally eats magic mushrooms 
Oh and yeah, I forgot about that. that was so and good. then for about five minutes, she's completely lost in the forest, and she doesn't know what's going on. And there's a lot of flashbacks regarding her own father who committed suicide years ago, and there's a lot of stuff. And then her own her stepdad who was killed at the beginning of the story. So you see some she sees them in her hallucinations. You think Wade might be nearby, and then so after that, she decides to do what she she can because she's a good tree climber. She climbs up the tree and tries to figure out where where Wade is and she believes Wade is coming towards her and the only thing she can do is there is that deputy the deputy sheriff station which is nearby or whatever that outpost is and she's she goes down the, the tree and she's making that one for it she's trying to run and run and towards that third act you're realizing oh my gosh is he right behind her she's running and running and you're thinking oh my gosh I'm so nervous I think you remember this where you think Wade's right behind her maybe gonna take a shot because and then there's Emily and there's the deputies and there's other people and it's a big misdirection because actually Wade is on his way to the house of Jenny, to the family home. So I, I really like liked how they structured that last act. It was very well done. That's why I gave it four stars, Eric. Yeah. So and also like just doing shrooms, uh, like when camping out in the, out in nature, is probably one of the best places to do it. <laughs> Unless there's a serial killer coming after you, there, there, <laughs> then it's like the worst go. time. There you go. Well, but, anyways, but, uh, real, real quick, that that was I I completely forgot about that until you just mentioned it. But oh, like the 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 way recently. they did the the because it wasn't like a you know they didn't play like a, a it, it didn't go too crazy like shrooms like when you take them like the colors and stuff become enhanced and yeah. kind of looks a lot like it did in the movie. So I'm guessing that Michelle and J.K. Simmons probably taking shrooms once or twice you know uh because it, it you know like sometimes um in movies when people uh represent doing some sort of drug or some mind-altering thing yeah um if you feel done realistic it, if you've done it you can watch that scene going oh that's just what they think that is that's not exactly how sure. it is whereas sometimes sometimes you'll have filmmakers that uh do the mind-altering substance and you're watching going Oh, they've done this before. <laughs> so, oh, so it was accurate. The magic mushroom sequence was accurate. It's, I mean, so the part where the, uh, she goes up and there's like a diorama of the house where the dad died. Um, I've never had any hallucinations quite that clear. So that part's a bit of a stretch. But like just the way the colors are and, uh, you know, how everything's kind of kind of almost cartoony or dreamy or whatever. Like that part was really accurate. Okay, very, very cool. Also, um, anything else you want to say about what we're going to wrap up now? This is it for our spoilers for You Can't Run Forever. I, yeah, I forgot how it. many. I forgot J.K. Simmons' body count, apparently. So I uh, need to watch it again. But <laughs> I, I, I say that like it's a problem. It's not. It's, it's not a, a really problem. cool movie. With the listeners, cinematic spam. And, that, I, yes. I, I, I think there's like, uh, like the movie's subtle enough that I think you probably watch this a couple of times and pick up some more, more kind of details from it that you probably perhaps you missed the first time. Definitely. I miss it. Cause I got donkey brains, but I'm talking about normal people with normal brains. You probably also pick up some details in future rewatches. Again, in fairness, I saw it two days ago. You saw it about a week and a half ago, Eric. So you got to give yourself a little bit of a break. A little bit. You can't run forever. Okay. Most importantly, Spoilers or, or not, just tell us what you think of this movie. We're obviously assuming Eric and I are just cutting to the quick regarding the spoiler talk. You might not know anything we're talking about, and that's probably because you didn't see the movie. So please watch the movie. Eric gave it four and a half stars. I gave it four stars. I believe it's an elevated crime thriller family drama thing. And my pitch to Eric, which he enjoyed, was it's reverse death wish meets a family drama, which I and it's a family affair. So if you want to, yeah, it, it literally is. And just kind of based on this, like, uh, I, I'm I'm assuming your thoughts are similar to mine, but like, I look if they're gonna do family reunions like once a year and just make you know make a movie, go for it. <laughs> do, do more of this, please. Right, and let's we did not mention on the main show the director. I mean, you mentioned it. Eric, but yeah, Michelle Schumacher co-writing the screen script with Carolyn Carpenter and the director Michelle Schumacher directed and co-wrote. Like Eric was mentioning, she's the wife of J.K. Simmons. She's a very good director. She does a yeah. very good job in this movie. So we we uh, are bad for not mentioning that on the review. But you, uh, I think if you've seen the movie, I hope you agree with us on this. So again, this is our our cinematics Patreon. 
If you are a Patreon member, you get this early access. If you are a Cinematics YouTube member, you usually get the, these Patreon stuff maybe a week, two, maybe three or four weeks down the road. Last thing I wanted to mention is it is, as we are recording this May 15th, we're going to roll this out in the next couple of weeks. We didn't mention this on the main show, but for every other week, Bruce, Perky, and Eric, they have a What's in the Box segment where Bruce picks out something from a director or a writer, actor that Eric has interviewed. And Eric will put that talent into Eric, into Bruce Perky's What's in the Box collection. So Bruce, over the last couple of years, several years, has a really big collection of recommendations from directors and actors. Now, for our Patreon members, if you want to assign me, Eric Holmes, and Bruce Perky a movie to review on one of our shows, that is a Patreon privilege. I'm going to add that. So this is the first time I'm mentioning it for, for our spoilers. So I don't know how many people are going to see this, but look, I, I think that's going to be, what do you think, Eric? We should have done this a while yeah. back as far as you yeah. know, one week. I mean, yeah. in the retro, as soon as you said it, I'm like, yeah, we probably should have done this a long time ago, but uh, yeah. well, here we are now. But yeah, yeah. and this will, uh, just to be clear, this will be in addition to, so if you have a movie in the box, that's fine. This is not what this is. So we'll do a what's in the box segment one week. And then the following week, we'll do the Patreon recommendation. So we'll take everyone's recommendations, just make a list. Uh, probably say like, yeah, we'll just get everyone's list and then just start at the top of the list and work our way down. Right. So, so get the, through it. Yeah. So it, it's going to be prohibitive a little bit now with the list of what's in the box. It's only going to be directors and writers and actors that Eric Holmes has interviewed. Okay. So that's going to be that list. So we're going to be, Eric and Bruce are going to be inter- re- usually reviewing that movie. I'm going to jump in as well when I can. But then for our, our real assigners, they will be our Patreon members. So one week, it'll be Bruce Perky and Eric Holmes talking about what's in the box. Hopefully, I jump in as well. And the following week will be an assigned movie that all three of us will watch. And keep Cinema in mind, I already saw Hip Hop Witch, so uh, you're <laughs> only punishing Greg and Bruce at this point. <laughs> all right, guys. A- a- again, thank you guys so much for supporting us on Cinematics. Most importantly, tell us what you think of you can't run forever as I cough. Eric, final, final thoughts? Yes, you can't run forever. But you know what you can do? You can go to Cinematics Pod... No, we're not doing that big. <laughs> <We're not laughs> but if you want to go to CinematicsPodcast.com. But you know what? You're already a Patreon member. You do plenty, so thank you. Thank you, whether you're a Patreon member or just a member of our Cinematic community as a Facebook group member or a member of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much just for all of the support, whatever layers you are on. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you next week or the next several days for more cinematics coverage.